Hi everyone, my name is Katie Bell and I'm a local food small farms educator for the University of Illinois Extension. And we are in Jackson County at the Murfreesboro office. Today we're gonna to be talking about fertigation in tomatoes. So we will be using this fertilizer injector to put fertilizer directly into our irrigation lines and that can really help us control our nutrient levels in tomatoes. The fertigation trial that I've got going, we're looking at different levels of potassium in the tomatoes. Potassium affects the, the inner flesh of the tomatoes, so they look really pretty on the outside, but then on the inside you cut them open and sometimes they have this really big white core in the middle, which is not good. Um, you can eat it, but it's not, it's not something you want to eat. So as far as uh, farmers markets and things like that, if you're selling customers slicing tomatoes, they're not going to want to cut it open and then have to throw away most of their tomato. Um, because of this core that's inedible. And potassium plays a direct role in that. And, and fertigation is really good because it's already dissolved in water. They can take it up really quick. We can distribute it right in the root zone and we should see effects happen pretty quickly as opposed to putting on uh, side dressing granular fertilizer or pre-plant fertilizer. They will get it eventually, but it takes sometimes it takes a little bit more time for that to come into um, a usable form for them or to have enough water for them to be able to take up the fertilizer. So then with the fertigation we're hoping we'll see quick results that we can see over the span of time. With this system we can really control exactly how much they're getting. Every time I do this they are getting 10 pounds of actual potassium, 7 pounds of actual nitrogen every time I do it and that's per acre. So what you saw me earlier with the little spoons that's because we're doing basically like a, a 12 foot area that they're getting fed in and so I have to break it down into, into fractions. Um, so with this injector system it goes into our handy dandy uh, plastic holding bin which you can do that with um, a milk jug or any kind of sturdy plastic and that works better than putting the uh, feeder tube into a bucket because no matter how close you can get it to the bottom it's still not going to suck up everything but this way it all drains down into the tube. So it runs through the tube and then into the injector. Um, there's also uh, water coming in from the from a garden hose that runs through and runs through the injector and that's what makes it pump and then it's it builds it creates suction and it pulls from our feeder bucket and there's also um, when you hook these up you need to be careful of your city codes and things that you have all of the proper um, backflow preventers and everything hooked up so you may want to uh, especially if you're doing this for a field operation talk to a plumber and make sure that everything is up to code that way because we are putting um, fertilizers in and we don't want any backflow either from our field water or from our fertilizer to backflow into what could potentially be municipal water. So that's something to keep in mind. So it goes into our injector and comes out and then we can set our injector rate. I have it on uh, running on uh, a 50 to 1 ratio or a 2% ratio which means for every 50 gallons that I pump from just from the hose or from my municipal water, I get one gallon of my fertilizer solution pumped through. So it's a it's a 50 to one ratio. And you can also adjust that to feed accordingly. I want, I had it set that high because I want it to feed really quickly. Um, and especially right now we've had a lot of rain. So I don't actually, they don't really need a lot of irrigation. I'm just putting on enough to make sure that they're getting the fertilizer. So whenever I mix, um, mix the fertilizer, you can use cold water because this is um, water soluble fertilizer. It's meant to be used in this situation. So it stirs up really easy and it goes into solution. And um, I've done all of my calculations ahead of time. So now I just have it written down that I have different spoonfuls um, or cups worth of fertilizer and you want to be careful that you weigh everything the first time because they can have different weights like one spoonful of potassium of our potassium nitrate weighs different than the, the nitrogen fertilizer that I was using so you have to kind of calculate all of that out and scale it down and that's one of the difficulties in plot research is, is that you're working in such a small area that you have to be really uh, conscious and mindful of your calculations because just a little bit more or less and 
if it was extrapolated out to an acre, you've made, you know, a huge error.